Dog and cat vaccines and cancer. Is there really a link? And is this something you really need to be concerned about? Are you looking to learn more about natural pet health and wellness? You've come to the right place. Click the link to subscribe to Veterinary Secrets. Recently, I've been getting a whole lot of questions about dog and cat vaccines. There has been a pile of news specifically around outbreaks of the measles, the apparently low vaccination rate in some areas, specifically here in Canada, but also some areas of the US. And public health officials are saying in very clear terms that these things, they're safe, super beneficial. They really do a great job of protecting you, which is true in some cases. What about your dogs, your cats? If you get your dog, your cat repeatedly vaccinated, like, does that increase the risk of them developing cancer? It really depends who you ask. One well-recognized veterinary site says that there is no association between immunizations or vaccinations and cancer in dogs. Yes, all people agree there is a mild association risk between vaccination in our cats and vaccines, specifically a type of cancer called VAS or vaccine-associated sarcoma. The reported incidence of this type of cancer in our cats is extremely low. Somewhere between 1 to 3 and 10,000 cats, meaning it would potentially occur 0.03%. Seems pretty low risk, right? Isn't that true, kitty cat? But this type of cancer called an injection site sarcoma, where you've given a vaccine more typically associated with the rabies vaccine in here between the shoulder blades, can cause a pretty marked reaction. You can get this chronic inflammation, and over time, that can lead to cancer. And that does happen in a small percent of dogs. The stats are somewhere between 1 and 10,000, so less than 0.01%. And it's thought that the golden retrievers, the boxers, are at a higher incidence. Meaning, even in official reported stats, that does happen in our dogs. So the statement that there is no correlation between vaccines and cancer, not exactly true. We have these really high incidence of cancer in our dogs. 50% of dogs over the age of 10, they're gonna develop cancer. It's really common. We seem to be seeing it in younger animals and we seem to be seeing it more frequently. Like there is something going on to cause this. So could vaccines be one of these things? There are many, many things that can potentially predispose your dog or cat to developing cancer. There's genetics, they may be prone to it. Early spay and neuter, you know, that can increase the risk of some of the cancer, especially in our medium and large breeds. Some of the food related toxins, the heavy metals like cadmium, a clear correlation between the cadmium and cancer. Then we have environmental toxins, things that we're spraying on the lawns, things like Roundup that your dog's gonna walk in, lick his paws, consume some of that. We know that's correlated with increased cancer risk. But how concerned should you be about this, the vaccines? One of the big correlations with us, with our animals, with our dogs and cats, is the link with chronic inflammation and cancer. Acute inflammation, your dog gets a cut, your dog's immune system mounts an inflammatory response, there's an inflammation around that, sends in healing cells, deals with the bacteria, pulls the skin back together. That's short-term inflammation. That's really beneficial. But what about chronic unresolved inflammation? Where your dog, your cat's immune system, it's not reacting appropriately, and it's chronically reacting to allergens, for instance, that are in the surface of the skin. Something that we see in our dogs that have atopy, environmental allergy. Or repeated injections of these antigens via a vaccine that then lead to chronic inflammation because we've repeatedly stimulated the immune system. And we know in some cases that immune system, it doesn't just respond one time and produce antibodies to whatever virus you're trying to vaccinate against. It can lead to chronic inflammation. Chronic or unresolved inflammation, that can lead to the exact microenvironment that can lead to the development and the progression of cancer. You have inflammatory cells damaging the DNA that can lead to cell mutations, can lead to cancer. This chronic inflammation damages the cells, these cells die, that leads to increased number of cells being produced. That's directly correlated with the development of cancer. I mean, what is cancer? It is uncontrolled cell growth. 
And then we have the right microenvironment, such as increased number of cytokines, like tumor necrosis factor or interleukin-6, which are directly correlated with cancer development. So I think we all agree that chronic inflammation, it's bad, right? Never mind all the other associated things being uncomfortable. It can lead to some pretty big serious health consequences. But can vaccines cause this? Well, number one, these injection site sarcomas, you know, where a vaccine has been given, same here between the shoulder blades, it's led to an initial inflammatory response and they feel this bump or swelling. That chronic inflammation as a result of that injection, that is directly correlated with development of this local type of cancer, this vaccine or injection site sarcoma. There is a well-agreed upon correlation there between chronic inflammation, cancer. And if you repeatedly give your dog or cat vaccines, maybe multiple vaccines every year, you are chronically stimulating their immune system. You're asking their immune system to respond and produce antibodies to whatever virus you're trying to prevent and or bacteria. And in some cases that can lead to chronic inflammation. And we know there's a direct correlation. Chronic inflammation sets up the right microenvironment for cancer to potentially develop. So yes, in my opinion, yeah, there is a correlation between vaccines and cancer. But does it mean you should never vaccinate your dog? Stop vaccinating your cat. No, that's not what I'm saying. Vaccines are important at preventing serious infectious diseases. And if I were to have a puppy again, if I were to have a kitten again, I would give them some vaccines, especially while they're puppies and kittens, but I would give them a very minimal and moderate vaccine regimen, vaccinating at eight weeks, at 12 weeks, consider rabies vaccines at six months. If that was needed, if rabies was a concern in my area, then a year after the 12 week booster, I then follow that up with tighter testing to see if they'd had protected level of antibodies. Then after that, I would probably not vaccinate my puppy and or my kitten again, who's now become a young adult dog or cat. Like that would be it. Cancer, it's clearly multifactorial. There isn't sort of one thing that's causing cancer and I wish there was and we can just eliminate it and stop it from ever happening. But I think there are multiple potential causes. My choice is to remove any of those potential causes affecting my pets to make it far less likely for them to develop cancer. And I've just, just seen way too many animals of my own animals that have had cancer, so many different clients' animals that had cancer. And I mean, if, if you can just do one or two or three different things slightly different, it could be a, such a big benefit. Because the last thing you want is, you know, obviously none of us want to have our dogs or cats having cancer. But knowing that maybe if I'd not given this or I'd altered their food or hadn't exposed them to that, you know, flea and tick medication month after month, they wouldn't have gotten in the first place. In my opinion, I think vaccines are just one part of that key. You're going to use them when it's appropriate, prevent those serious common infectious diseases, but you're not going to give repeated vaccines year after year and just be thoughtful when and if you are going to ever revaccinate your dog or cat. Thank you so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets of Dog and Cat Vaccines and the potential links to cancer. Click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and when you click that link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.